Good morning, everybody. 
Good morning and happy Mother's Day to all of you out there. Those of you that are here in the Centrum and those of you who are joining us online, my name is David Donovan and I'm the Minister of Music here and it's great to be back with you this morning after I was away last weekend. We are going to start our worship celebration this morning with a couple songs that you see showing there in your worship order. The first one is entitled, Come, Now is the Time to Worship. So let's stand and if you feel like putting your hands together, Whatever moves you this morning, this is come, now is the time to worship. And one, two, three. <laughs> second song this morning is in worship and song the one with the green cover there beside your seat this is entitled there's a spirit of love in this place number 
Let's turn and welcome each other in the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning. All right. Nice to see everybody greeting what my friend David Hill calls the holy commotion out there. It's Always good to greet one another. I'm Pastor Jay, lead pastor. We're glad you're with us today. I know David already greeted you, those joining us online, and those, of course, here in the centrum. We're glad we're together on this special day in the life of our our church and in our world as we remember love, uh, the love of our mothers and the love of our Lord. Uh, I wanted to call your attention to a couple of things that are listed in the bulletin and by way of announcements. Uh, One of those being... uh, We're going to have a very special camp coming up here in June, June 12th to 16th. It'll be an Appalachian music arts camps for children uh, that are rising second to sixth graders. So if you know some young folks, they'd like to come and be a part of that camp. And it'll be under capable leadership of David, our our music uh, minister here. And I think they're going to make like dulcimers. It'll be a really good time. And so I'm hoping many of our young people will sign up to do that. Uh, There is a limited enrollment, though, to 25 people. So folks need to register fairly quickly. You also notice in your bulletin we're having a very special service coming up here in June. Uh, It's actually during conference uh, Sunday, so some of us will be away, uh, but for those of us that are here, there'll be a single service on that day, and it'll be a very special music uh, service, again, being led by Reverend David Donathan, our uh, music director, since many of us will be up at conference, but he's coming back with a special music program uh, that honors our windows here in our centrum, and I really hope you'll you'll join us for that. If I'm not mistaken, too, the Women of Faith, they had to cancel their uh, book sale due to the weather uh, yesterday they were concerned about the rains and being out there with books you know <laughs> doing a book sale in the rains not a good idea uh, and so they postponed that and that might even be happening again on that Sunday maybe part of a celebration I know they're planning to have hot dogs and some other things for that as well Uh, And again, you'll see other announcements in there regarding some things coming up, but especially next week. Next week is our graduation recognition Sunday, so if you know some folks that are graduating, including this young man over here uh, who I was talking to earlier, be sure to let them know to be with us for that special time of worship where we can honor them and recognize them and those milestones in their lives. Uh, Also, uh, if you know some college graduates, please let us know their information so we can include them uh, in our celebration. We'll be finalizing that next week and need your help. I got a lot of announcements today. I apologize. Uh, The one other announcement is, is the Fife Street Fellowship will not be meeting this week, but will pick up again next week. If you'd like to be a part of that study, they're really just kind of getting started with the Acts study. So uh, if you need a book or something, you know, we have them in my office. I'll be glad to get them to you. And I think that's all. That was a lot, but uh, several things to cover there. Now, as we prepare for our time of prayer, Uh, As always, we have a couple prayer requests that come to us from our assistance ministry program. We invite them to come in as they're receiving help from us to also share their requests uh, and their prayer requests. Uh, Again, one of the individuals whom we served last week asked for prayer to uh, keep her apartment. They've gone through a rough time and we're fearing eviction and they're praying that their landlord will be able to work with them and have some compassion in their situation. Another one asked to have prayer for one of their good friends uh, who's in the hospital on life support and wasn't expected to make it. So we want to remember uh, these folks who come through our assistance ministry uh, and the prayers that they ask us. Uh, We also want to be in prayer for those in our community uh, who are struggling with illness. We're glad some have come back home to visit, even though they've got a lifted up foot, and we'll be in prayer for your foot, recovering from your surgery. Uh, we're glad you're here. Uh, also remembering those who've uh, lost loved one, the Freer family. I know we lifted that up last week. 
Uh, they will be, uh, that service won't be till the 23rd uh, due to them needing to move it back some because of uh, returning Dick to, Cal- to New York, excuse me, uh, for his burial. Uh, and so watch for more information regarding that service. Uh, but again, be sure to share your uh, words of support for Ellen uh, and the Freer family. Again, at this service, we also invite you, if you have a prayer concern here on the floor, to lift it up if anybody has anything. Okay. Well, as I light our prayer candle, let us center ourselves in God's presence and go to the Lord in prayer. God of grace and love, a love that never ends, a love that goes on and on and on. As we gather in your presence today, we we celebrate that love, your love that you share through us, through your son, Jesus, our Savior, and also the love that we've experienced through our mothers and the women in our lives, those people who have taught us what love is through their selfless service and guiding us and directing us. We give thanks for for their unending love that supports and carries us, just as we give you thanks for your love that carries us through all things. For on this day, O God, we remember that time when you were with your disciples and you were telling them that you were leaving them. The pain in their heart was so immense, yet you reminded them that you would be with them always, just in a new and different way. We, as the followers, since then experienced that through the grace of your Holy Spirit. And we pray that your, your Holy Spirit and that gracious presence you offer would be with all those whom we hold in our heart today, especially those who, who've lost loved ones, those who are ill, those who are struggling. We pray special prayers for those who this Sunday is the first Sunday without their mothers. Uh, that may have passed in the last year and that they especially would be comforted and know your presence and know that love that goes on and on and on, a love that, that never ends, a love that can carry them. We pray for your world, a world engaged in conflict that, that longs for that love to manifest in the hearts of our leaders and to those in places of conflict like the Sudan and others. We pray for a healing of hearts and a a healing of countries and and just a healing of these warlike tendencies that permeate throughout our world and our culture. For you have called us to, to be a people of peace and a people of grace. And so we pray that that peace might come, O God, that that peace that comes through your love and through the power of your spirit and that it might manifest among us and throughout the world. And we ask these things today, O God, in the name of the one who came to show us that expression of your love, this Jesus, our Savior and Lord, the one who invites us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now if I can invite the the little ones to come down. I see uh, Elizabeth and James are with me this morning. I thought I had a picture here. Maybe I didn't. might be back in my office. So I'll just have to talk to you about it, okay? Come on up and sit down. Have a seat right there so everybody can see you. Oh, there you go. Oh, now I'm getting down. Now, James, you know the rule. If I can't get up, it's up to you. Help me up. All right. Today's a special day, isn't it? What is today? Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Yeah, 
yes, today we remember our mothers. And, you know, one thing we remember about our mothers is what do they do for us? They give birth to you. <laughs> good job. I was thinking more like they take care of me, <laughs> but you're good. <laughs> All right, but yeah, but they, they give birth to us, but then they take care of us, they teach us, they, they show us things, don't they? And so they demonstrate their love to us, right? Yeah, I know your mother does. I know she teaches you. You'll do all kinds of things where she shows her love to you. Well, today's the day we get to show our love to her. And I was thinking about that a little bit. And for me, I started thinking about my dogs. I know that sounds weird, right? What do you mean? You're thinking about Mother's Day, you're thinking about your dogs. Well, you see, I try to take care of my dogs. You know, I try to care for them and things like that. But I've got one dog named Maggie. And Maggie, every time I go out of town, and I start packing up my suitcase, Maggie goes absolutely crazy. She starts whining and jumping around because she doesn't want me to leave her, right? Kind of like we might feel if mom went to travel and you know, dad went out of town or something, right? We, we'd miss them and we'd worry that they were gone. But you see, Jesus, when he was getting ready to go away, when he was ready to go to heaven and you know, move on, he was talking to his disciples. And he told them that even though he was leaving, he would not leave them orphaned, that he would always be with them. And his promise was because he would have the gift of the Holy Spirit and that the Spirit would be with them and teach them and care for them. Just like our moms and dads care for us and take care of us, Jesus does the same thing through the gift of the Spirit. So I want you to remember, even though if you get nervous, I don't know, you're checking something out there, Elizabeth. What do we got up there? Something pretty cool? All right, that's okay. I want you to always remember that your mom and dad's love and Jesus' love goes on and on and on and it's always there for you even when you can't see him, which is kind of special, all right? And also, I want to ask you to do me a favor, okay? Will you do me a favor today? Since it's Mother's Day, I want you to do something really good for your mom and help her out and do things, okay? I'm not going to tell you what to do. You think about what that special thing is that you could do for your mom to show her that you love her. I know when I was little, it would have been cleaning my room because I was pretty sloppy. But you do whatever you think is best, okay? Will you do that for me? Remember that God's presence is always there. His love is always there. And today, show that love to your mom, okay? All right, will you pray with me? Loving God, we are so thankful that you are always with us. We are also so thankful for the love that we receive through our mothers and those women in our lives. Let us today remember to share our love with them. Amen. All right. Good to see you guys. Oh. I'm still convinced one of these days I'm not going to be able to do that as far as getting up. Our offering today, we invite you, of course, to share your tithes and offerings that will be shared in our ministries here together. Uh, many wonderful things. Uh, one thing I forgot to lift up to you, again, it's kind of that extra mile giving we do that's helping to take care of our debt reduction from our uh, remodeling that occurred a few years ago. But if you go out in the narthex today, you'll see a thermometer out there. We are down to $386,000 due to your generosity. And I, I thank you for that. I know when I got here, that debt was $2.5 million. So we've come, you all have done a wonderful job of seeking to address that. Uh, but you'll notice it's dropped some, and we continue to thank you for your gifts towards that special project, but also your general giving here to our church that supports all of our ministries, including the upcoming camp and the things that will be going on. As we prepare today for our offering, and as you share in it, we'll be sharing a special song called One Thing Remains by Foster and Galbraith.
the power of the grave. Constant through the trial and the change, one thought we'd do a rocking one today. We don't always do that. Thank you, David and Joe and the rest of the band. It was a song I'd heard and I thought would fit in real well today. Our gospel lesson today comes to us from the gospel of John. It's the 14th chapter, verses 15 to 21, and it was that time right before Jesus was preparing to depart with his disciples. John gives us a very long time there where Jesus is teaching and praying and talking to his disciples during that time of the Last Supper. And this is part of it. He says, If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. 
This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, as we gather in your house on this day, when we remember the love of our mothers, and as we gather together and celebrating your love for us, I pray as always that these simple words in my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight for you ever and always are our rock and our redeemer, the one whose love never quits. Amen. You know, Dr. Tony Campalo is a pretty famed, well-known, and respected pastor and inspirational speaker and storyteller. I've, I've used some of his stories. I've shared some of his stories with you before. But, you know, over the last several years, he has spent much of his time traveling around the country, and he goes and he does speaking tours. And while he's doing that, though, his wife Peggy has chosen to, to stay at home and to give herself and all that she has to bringing up her two children, Bar, their two children, Bart and Lisa. But on those rare occasions when uh, Peggy would travel with Tony, she said she often found herself engaged in conversation with some very uh, sophisticated and accomplished and impressive people from throughout the world. And after one such trip, they were coming back home, and you know Peggy was talking to Tony, and she said sometimes when she was on those visits and she ran into all of these powerful people, she sometimes felt intimidated. And she began kind of questioning her, her own self-worth. And so Tony said to her, he said, well, honey, why don't you come up with something that you could say when you meet people that will let them know that you strongly value what you do and you feel that it is very important and it's, it's crucial and, and urgent in our world today. Well, of course, not too long after that, they were making one of those trips and they were at a party. And a woman came up to Peggy in a rather condescending tone and said, well, my dear, what do you do? Tony kind of leaned in so he could hear what his wife said. She says, well, I'm nurturing two homo sapiens into the dominant values of the Judeo-Christian tradition in order that they might become instruments for the transformation of the social order into the kind of eschatological utopia God envisioned at the beginning of time. <laughs> to which the woman replied, oh my, I'm just a doctor. But mothers... Mothers raise homo sapiens to become instruments in God's plan for the world. Be they the ones who give us birth or the ones who raise us. Be they stay-at-home moms or working moms. Regardless of who they are, mothers, of course, have a crucial role to play in our lives and the world. For these women in our lives, they nurture and care for us and, and they are important and they are valued, I think, partly because they teach us about this thing called love. And that's why today, uh, when we in the U.S. pause, we, we recognize mothers on this special day. And, and I believe that more than a, a Hallmark holiday or a merchandising moment, uh, again, today is a special day. One of the things about Mother's Day, many of you, of course, already know this, but that, you know, it's a holiday that has its roots right here in West Virginia. Because the first celebration was at Andrews United Methodist Church in Grafton on a day when Anna Jarvis, a woman who never was able to have children of her own, first commemorated Mother's Day on the second Sunday in May 1908. And though it's not a religious holiday or a holy day in the church calendar, I think it is very fitting to remember Mother's Day in the life of the church and in our worship today. And I think so because central to our understanding of motherhood and parenting in general is this thing called love. A love that, that calls us beyond ourselves, a, a love that sustains and nurtures, a love that carries us through, 
a love that never quits. Maternal love and parental care is where we as children first learn what love is. And a group of social scientists once asked some children, what does love mean? And as they responded, their answers got broader and deeper than anyone could have imagined. One of them said, when my grandmother got arthritis, she couldn't bend over and paint her toenails anymore. So my grandfather does it for her all the time, even when his hands got arthritis too. That's love. Another one said, love is when someone hurts you and you get so mad, but but you don't yell at them because you know it would hurt their feelings. And another one said, love is like a little old woman and a little old man who are still friends, even after they've known each other so well. And then another one said, there are two kinds of love. Our love and God's love. But God makes both kinds of them. And then finally, one said, when they crucified Jesus, God could have said magic words to make the nails fall off the cross, but he didn't. And that's love. From the mouths of babes. I was thinking about these things this week because of Mother's Day. It's a time when we recognize and we acknowledge the women in our lives who have loved and nurtured us. Those special ones who have taught us about love and especially God's love. Because as a child noted, the love we experience in our lives has its roots in the love of God. That love of God expressed in and through Jesus Christ. In our gospel text this morning, Jesus is preparing his disciples for the time of his departure. The time when he would be leaving them. And so as they're gathered there, Jesus gives them his last words of support. He knew that the time of his leaving was approaching and he wants them to be prepared. He's been talking about his death in terms that the disciples don't clearly understand. And then as they begin begin to worry, and I'm sure Jesus can begin to feel the, the tension in the room. He says, I will not leave you orphaned. I will not abandon you. Now they know something big is happening. I'm sure they remember that just three short years before, Jesus had called them into ministry. And ever since that moment, they had been with him, and Jesus had always been there with them. They could never have done what they'd done without him. For in this faith journey of following this Messiah, they'd never been alone. Jesus had always been there, and the very physicality of Jesus' presence had been the source of their assurance. The miracles, the the teachings, the leadership, it's been enough to keep them going. And now he says he'd be leaving them. The unthinkable was happening. How would they proceed? Some of them may have been thinking, well, I guess I'll get my fishing buddies and see if there's an opening back at the cannery at Capernaum. But in the midst of this confusion, Jesus reassures them and he says, don't worry. He says that even after his death that he will still be with them. I will not leave you orphaned, he says. He will not quit being with them. He will still encourage them, plead with them, pray with them, teach them. He will still love and care for them. His love for them will never quit. But his being present was going to be different. He said, I will be coming to you. And this coming to them would be in the form of the Holy Spirit. What we read here in the Greek, the paraclete, the the advocate. But what exactly is a paraclete? Well, in ancient times, if you help someone in need, you were known as a paracletos. A paraclete. If a physician or a nurse was at the bedside of of a stricken patient, might be called a paracletos. Likewise, a a preacher or, or a teacher who brings listeners a word of encouragement was sometimes called a paraclete. A counselor at law rushing in in the defense of a client was also called a paraclete. 
And it's this courtroom image that the Revised Standard Version had in mind when it translated it counselor. And then when we did the new Revised Standard Version, they, they began to interpret it as the advocate with a, with a capital A. But Jesus is telling his disciples that God will send them a paraclete, a very help, present help in times of trouble. Jesus isn't changing. He's still the Messiah. He's still the anointed one of God. It is only the nature of his presence that was going to change. For he says, in a little while, the world will no longer see me. But you will see me. You will be present to them in the form of this Holy Spirit. The Spirit of truth. They will never be alone. They should never feel orphaned. He would still be with them. I'm sure we've all been through circumstances when we sign up to do something, but we want to do it as long as we've got someone there to help us, right? And if we have to do it alone, then, oh my gosh, forget it. And I believe that's the key issue here. The disciples signed on to follow Jesus. And Jesus was going to be their team leader. And and we sign on because we believe God will be present in our lives and that God is trustworthy, that God is someone we can count on. And then something happens. Something happens in our lives and we begin to think that perhaps God is not with us. Bad things happen to good people. We lose someone special. Our life just isn't coming out like we planned to quote Harry Chapin the new job's a hassle and the kids got the flu and life begins to look like we've gotten a barrel of lemons and indeed sometimes we may feel like we're orphaned and in that moment we're probably tempted to quit and simply throw in the towel but you see a life of faith this journey of faith is like that Sometimes doubt set in. Sometimes despair overwhelms us and and this whole notion of believing in God starts seeming crazy. And Jesus knew that his disciples would have days like that. And so he told them. He told them that when these difficulties come, trust in the one who is always more than we can understand. And when doubts arise, we can cling to the paraclete, the the helper to keep us moving ahead on the journey of faith. And we can count on him to to come and to encourage us when, when believing seems absurd. Because Jesus said, I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. And because I live, Jesus promises his followers, you also will live. You see, my my friends, the good news is that Christ has conquered this power of sin and death. And that same God who, who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to us through his spirit that dwells with us and among us. So no matter what tragedies come our way, whether they be academic or medical or vocational or emotional, we can hold tight to the promise that Jesus gives us this gift of life. Life in this world and life in the world to come. We belong to Christ. And his spirit gives us life. And this is good news. No matter what our circumstances may be today. But of course as Jesus starts this narrative. He he suggests that there might be some strings attached. He talks about this thing called obedience. Because he says if you love me. You'll keep my commandments. And on the surface, this almost sounds like conditional love being presented to us by the one who loves us unconditionally. And I'm kind of like, well, what's this about? And on the surface, it it starts sounding somehow maybe demanding or difficult or even daunting. But the important thing to remember and to keep in mind is that these rules of which Jesus is speaking all simply involve love. For just a few verses earlier, he said to his disciples, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. 
And I began to recognize it's really all about love. His love for us. And then our love for one another and each other. And this love is the guiding principle which gets us through whatever we're facing. Jesus, I believe, is telling them and telling us that when you're feeling defeated, love one another. When the medical test is disturbing, love one another. When a family member is facing a layoff, love one another. When there's a death in the community, love one another. When a friend is rejected, love one another. Because as he says, by this everyone will know that you're my disciples. If you have love for one another. For you see, this Holy Spirit, this paraclete, this advocate is the spirit of truth, he says. And it's the truth of love. This spirit is the one who leads us into this life of love, comforting us and and carrying us through anything that life throws at us. Because Jesus says, I'm here in every situation. And love never quits. And this love is the love of the God who says, you're mine. And I'll never leave you. The love of a Savior who says, it doesn't matter what you've done, I forgive you and love you anyway. It's the love of a community filled with the spirit of love, which says, come and be with us and live in a place where we care and love one another, where we share one another's burdens and we lift one another up when things get tough. For you see, this simple value of love is the one that undergirds all we are and all we do because our Lord modeled it for us. And then he says, do likewise. And in this Jesus, we have seen and encountered a love that no one has seen before or since for that matter. The agape love of God which transcends this fickle nature of feelings and instead becomes an act of will, a love which places others first, a love that's willing to die so that others might live, a love so great it conquered even death. So my friends, on this day when we honor the love of the women in our lives, let us recognize how their love for us was rooted in this deeper love of God that we see in this Jesus who calls us to love as he loved us and to be a community of love, a community in which love is received into our hearts and lives, a community in which love is expressed in our life together, but most especially a community which is grounded in grace, the grace and love of our Savior Jesus Christ, the one whose love never ends, who never gives up on us and invites us to join him in loving others. Because I sense it's really that simple. Love one another as I've loved you because love never quits. My love for you and because of my love, your love for others. Just like our mothers have loved us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, again, we give you thanks for the women in our lives who have shown us that love of yours in a tangible way. Yet we also remember that no matter what's going on, your love is there for us. A love that carries, sustains, but most especially empowers and inspires us to be your loving presence in this world. May that presence be with us this day and always. Amen. I'd like to invite you to stand and sing our closing song this morning. It's in the hymnal number 356, When We Are Living. And this comes to us from the Spanish tradition. When we are living, it is in Christ Jesus.
Now, my sisters and brothers, let us go forth into the world trusting in that love of God that that never quits, that gift of the Holy Spirit that will carry, sustain us, and show us the way of love so that all might know they are loved. Go forth in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.